The grace life operates under the kingdom of God. The grace life obeys the word of God. The grace life don't look in the word to try and find a reason to keep doing what you're doing. See, see the grace life or the higher life or a higher way of thinking is not going to look in the word of God and try to figure out why you should keep doing what you're doing. It's, gonna, you know, it's like, let me find a way to justify my sin. Let me try to find a way to justify my wrong living. Let me try to find a way to justify what I'm doing. So I'm going to look in the Bible and try to twist it a little bit to make sure it's okay. Or, you know, we're taking the grace message. Well, we're under grace anyway, so I can just do what I want to do. No, the Bible, no, there, there's still laws in there. There's still things in play. There's still natural laws that, that, that'll take place for you making uh, food decisions. Are oh, you yeah, hearing me? You can't take the grace message and treat it like, oh, well, I'm under grace. I can do what I want to do because I'm under grace. You, so you use grace as an excuse to sin because you feel like because I'm under grace, I can just sin. No, that's not how you do it. The Bible says don't take the grace of God and treat it as if it were a common thing or treat it like it's witchcraft. All right, well, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to sin. Oh, I'm under grace. So, you, so you, you just keep using it as an excuse to stay in a perpetual state of sin. That's not, that's not the life that God has for you. Say it with me. I, I listen, listen to, to the voice. voice. I, I make, make decisions, decisions based, based off, off of, the voice of the voice I hear from God. Everybody say it with me. I, I listen, listen to, to the voice. voice. I, I make, make decisions. decisions. Based off of what I hear from the kingdom. Your friends cannot be the greater voice for you. Your friends cannot be the greater voice for you. Your friends cannot be the greater voice for you. Are you listening to me? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Let me read that. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm just teaching you today. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Here's what it says. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, the people of God, it's Paul talking, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. So listen to what he says here. He says, I believe, God, that you will be granted a spirit of wisdom and revelation into the deep and intimate things of God concerning you. Well, how do you get wisdom and how do you get revelation? You got to spend time in his presence. How do you get wisdom and how do you get revelation? You got to spend time in his presence. How do you spend time in his presence? You put on some worship. How do you spend time in his presence? Sometimes you just get on your knees and you begin to pray. We're going to talk about that over the next couple weeks. How do you spend time in his presence? Uh, you pray in the Holy Ghost. That is your personal prayer language that, that God has given you. You know you can get in the presence of God and, and spend time in the presence of God by just praying in the Spirit. The Bible says when you pray in the Spirit, you build up your inner man. The Bible says when you pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for you. He begins to intercede for you. So he's giving you a personal, private prayer language that you can pray that will build you up and make you stronger and wiser and, and make supernatural decisions how do you get in his presence you you know sometimes you know you may just uh, uh, be laying in the bed and you begin to talk to the Lord and you lift your hands I do that sometimes just laying in the bed I'll just lift my hands and begin to talk to him I right, listen to me like the overarching message for the day for you guys is judge the friends and people that are around you judge don't make your friends an idol don't make your friends God in your life, and their voice becomes stronger than, than the voice of God. Their voice shouldn't be stronger than the voice of God. Are you listening to me? You got to learn to hear the voice of God. Got to learn to hear the voice of God. Got to learn to get in the presence of God. Got to hear the voice of God. Got to get in the presence of God. Got to hear the voice of God. Got to get in the presence of God. You got to hear the voice of God. You got to get in the presence of God. Now, here's the deal. You can get into to the presence of God easily. Why? Because you are righteous. 
See, your sins and your failures cannot stop you from getting into the presence of God. The Bible says that because you know God, you can come to him with boldness. The Bible says because you have accepted Jesus Christ, his blood gives you access to heaven at all times. Sometimes because you've compromised, you begin to think that God doesn't love you and that he's not going to hear you when you pray, when really, yes, he will hear you because you are the righteousness of God. Because you operate through the blood of Jesus, God hears you. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says this, therefore, since we are justified, listen to this, therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God through faith, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So he says here that you must understand that through and by the blood of Jesus, you have been justified. You have been justified because of the blood of Jesus. You can access God at any time because of the blood of Jesus. Even when you've made a mistake, you can access God. 